Hold on. I want to be clear on one thing. So neither of you are buying the back either. You just think this is a personal choice. The series is over and he's choosing not to play. Look, it's, I think it's a subjective uh, thing. Myself, no. I'm 100% in line with Stephen A. The problem is it's very difficult to say that when a guy's claiming he's hurt. I mean, I was an athlete. I, you know, some, some days I might have been feeling something and people don't believe you if you're not playing well and you're dealing with an injury. It's tough. When a guy says he's hurt, it's tough to flat out definitively say 100% you are not hurt. It comes down right. to just okay. based on but your observations right. of what no, no, I want to ask Jay, too, though, because I know where I, you are. I, You're not buying no, it. No, but hold on. You are big on receipts. So is Jay. Mm -hmm. I will remind you, Ben Simmons quit on LSU. He didn't really quit on LSU. He, listen, listen. Everybody, he wanted to get his bag and wanted to get his money. No, 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 no I'm talking pick. about when he missed games during the season. Okay. I'm talking about that. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about leaving okay. early. He wants right. to get his bag. I'm talking about leaving early. I'm talking about the injuries, the games he didn't play at LSU. He quit on LSU. That's widely recognized in college basketball. You know this. Most people believe he quit on Philly. And if you, Kevin Durant, the Brooklyn Nets, how the hell are you supposed to feel about him now? Everywhere he goes, he's not reliable. We know what a surreal talent he is. We know how big time of a talent he is, despite the fact that he can't shoot worth a damn. We know that. But you cannot trust people. When you can't trust people to show up to work, you can't So we have them. two people then on the nets that you don't trust to show up to work. I believe that there is some type of energy injury, players. but this is where you want somebody to have the mental fortitude to say, you know what, I'm going to give you 10 minutes. I think, I think the kind of applaud that he would get from everybody in the basketball community, right. if you saw him try to fight through it, right. for what it meant for his team, would shift the conversation around Ben Simmons, but he chose not to. Big difference between hurting and being injured. Injured, exactly. Everybody, every single player yeah. you're going to watch tonight, and watch over the course of the playoffs, is hurting in some degree. Right. Yeah. And you're the, trying to play through it. The, the difference is this. There was a time when a guy would say, if I'm an 18 and 8 guy, mm -hmm. but you know what? I can only give you like 12 and 5. I'm going to give you 12 and 5. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Problem is now, guys go out and they're like, I am not coming back on the court until, until I'm 100. 18 and 8 again. That's right. And and that's, that's, what, that's what we sit there and look at a guy like Ben Simmons and say, man, you don't think – yeah. If, if he can move length There's, against a Jason Tatum, you could help Tatum. us right now. Yeah. Exactly. There's right? a book that's out. It's a bestseller. It's called Blood in the Garden. Mm -hmm. All right? In the book, there's a story that's being told about Pat Riley. He was the coach of the New York Knicks. And Charles Smith walked into the team meeting before a game when these guys were getting ready to play. And Pat, he walked in with his street clothes on. And Pat Riley said, if everything was on the line, do you think you could give us five minutes if you had to? Charles Smith said, yeah. Pat Riley said, then what the F are you doing here with your street clothes on? It typifies what we're talking about here. Mm. He said, could you give us five mm. minutes? And if you know you could give us five minutes, what are you doing here with your street clothes on? And so what you have is last comment, yep. and then I'll leave it alone. Back in the day, you had dudes who were playing, and they were looking to make the bag, make the paper, while in the same breath building the NBA brand. You got guys today that are getting paid high eight, nine-figure salaries, literally, and they're saying, now nah, I want to make sure I'm okay so I can get the next bag, the next contract. That's the difference in today's culture. And more so than ever before, when you take into account the pandemic and how it's ravaged folks financially, I have, I have been covering the NBA for 28 years. I have covered like four collective bargaining negotiations because I was covering it before I was covering the NBA in 1995. I have never, ever seen the owners more committed to addressing something as, as committed as they are to addressing these brothers' willingness to miss games. What the damage that these few, albeit few, it's not most, it's not all, just a few, but the damage these players have done to the players, the, they gonna feel it. The owners are coming, the league is coming, and I, for one, don't blame them one damn bit. It is a travesty what just a few of these players have done to damage this sport. And they're going to pay for it. You can book it. All right. 
Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.